So you want to make a music visualizer, but you want to do it from scratch. Hey guys, welcome back to by Kai. I'm Kai, and today we are back in Blender 2.8 once again, taking a look at how to create a music visualizer. We don't have any time to waste. Let's get started. I'm gonna go ahead and we're gonna use Default Cube today. I'm gonna get rid of our lamp because we don't need it. With our camera selected, we're gonna hit Alt G and Alt R to clear the rotation and movement. Uh, R X R X 90 on my numpad, and then G Y to move it back. Hit zero on my numpad to go into the camera's view. We'll double tap. We'll do that again. Uh, maybe a little bit further away. Something like that. All right. So default cube is pretty small right now. That's fine because we're going to go ahead and with the default cube select. Maybe not that far away. Oh, geez. Uh, there we go. That's better. Okay. With the uh, default cube selected, I want to go ahead and drag open this bottom panel down here. Split our window into two from the top. And we'll change this to the uh, graph editor here. We're also going to open up this tab on the left on the right hand side. Sorry. Um, now, with the default cube selected, I'm going to hit I to add in a uh, keyframe of scaling on the first frame. Um, and then we're going to go ahead and we're going to choose some audio. So we need audio that we're going to use for this video. We're going to go ahead and let me open that up. Uh, on key, we're going to hit key and then go to bake sound to F curves. And you're going to find your music and you're going to choose that. All right, so I've grabbed our music right here. It's uh, the Samurai Kai intro, which is my gaming channel. We're going to use this. Um, this uh, audio right here. We're just, you see, we have these uh, settings down here as well, which is nice. We don't we don't need to mess with any of that right now. And we're gonna go ahead and hit uh, bake sound to F curves. Now you can see we have this line here, which is moving up and down. Um, but there's a problem. We can't hear anything. The reason for that is because we need to go and change this from the graph editor to the video sequencer. Go back to the first frame and hit add sound, and then just import that same audio once again. Now we can hear the audio when it plays. Which is nice. So we're gonna go ahead and fix up our in frame because this has 385 frames. You can see the amount of frames right there. So we're gonna change our in frame to 385 and hit enter on that. Now it's the exact length of our music, which is nice. So we can go ahead and go back to the graph editor here and um, and do the stuff we need to do now. If I go into the camera's view, which is still too far away, so G Y to move inwards, something like that. I guess it's fine. We'll go ahead and get rid of my 3D cursor right here. Just drop that box down because that's, that's annoying me. Um, now, with our box selected here, our cube, we're going to go ahead and go down to modifiers on this uh, right-hand side panel. Add a modifier of limits. Now, this limits, we're going to check all of these. <laughs> all of them are going to be checked. Now, when we play this, nothing will happen. When we play this, nothing will happen now, um, which is fine because we need to fix some stuff up. So the maximum X is going to be 1. The, let me move it about right there. The maximum Y is going to be 0.1, something like that, I think. And all of these are also going to be 0.1. All right, so there we go. Now, we have our line, which is now moving. And you, when we play this, you'll be able to tell that it's going up and down like a music visualizer does. Perfect. Then when it gets to the more aggressive part. All right, so we have that, which looks great. Now, if you want to change the scale of this, the, the width, you can always mess around with the Y uh, value. So we have uh, we had 0.1, now we got 0 0.05. You can see it's much thinner now. I'm going to go for something a bit thicker, and then we'll change it later on. So I'm going to stay with 0.1 for now. All right, so with that done, we can go ahead and multiply these on out. Now, we can do this a couple different ways, but the best way, since we have much more customization, is to just duplicate them. So we're going to uh, hit this snap during transform on, and we're going to change it to, uh, we're going to make sure absolute grid is on. And now if we hit shift D to duplicate them, and we move it, oh, no, let's do this. Let's fix that. Not increment, we need vertex. Uh, mm, yes, okay, that's right. <laughs> now, we have uh, this cube working all nice and stuff. It's kind of small right now, though, but that's fine. So let's go ahead and actually, instead of that, let's do, let's, let's do, let's do by values. Let's do by values. So we will go ahead and turn snap off because I don't, I don't like doing things with snap. Um, yeah, okay, it's so good. So we hit shift D and then on my uh, keyboard hit G X point five no that's too much gx.2 gx.2 looks fine perhaps maybe yeah all right gx2 is fine so we'll go ahead and do that let me hide my camera so we'll hit one of my numpads to go in the front facing view so we see straight on uh, actually you know what we'll do we'll select our camera in the camera tab here we'll go from perspective to uh to ortho to orthographic there we go so now we can uh see what's going on from a direct point of view 
Now, we have these two lines here. This one is in the center. This one's not. Let me go ahead and go back to our camera so we can see what the center is. We'll go to um, uh, safe. No, not safe areas. View background. Where is this at? I forget. There's something. Oh, composition, guys. They moved it. That's Why do they move things? It's That's bugging me. In viewport display, we have uh, composition guide. We'll just turn center on. Now we can see this is the one that's in the center. It's perfect. So... We have that taken care of. Now with this second line here, I don't want them to move exactly on the same on the same threshold. So what we're going to do is we're going to go back to the beginning, the first frame, because if we don't go to the first frame, it'll start the animation wherever our cursor's at. So it'll start at 120, which we don't need. We need it to go at zero. We need to start at zero. So we're going to go back to the first frame, hit with that second line selected, with the not, one not in the center. We'll go to channel, uh, we'll go to key, bake sound, F curves. We'll select the same clip but we'll change the threshold. We'll change it from z zero to 0 0.1. Then we'll hit bake. Now you can see when I play this, you can see that the second line is now a bit offset from the first line, which is nice. So we can keep doing this process over and over until we have enough of the lines that we want. So I'm gonna go ahead and choose a nice little place to take a look at the keyframes, which is about right there. We'll hit shift D uh, and we'll move it over again. So no, what was that? Uh, G. Uh, X.2, enter. Now we can go ahead and go back to the first frame once again. Uh, G, uh, key, bake sound, F curves, select that clip, uh, threshold the 0.2, and you can keep going up by 100. You can do by 50, so you can go, instead of by 2, you can go uh, 1, 5, so 150. You can do whatever you want here. Uh, it's all up to you, your per personal preference. I'm going to go by oh, uh, 0.1s though, so 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0 0.4, all the way up to uh, 1. So I'll keep doing that until we get all the way up to 1, and then I'll be back when that's complete. Alright, so now we can pretty much, uh, we can do a couple of things here. Either we can just take these and duplicate them and then move them over. So we would do that by selecting one and then hitting Shift D, right clicking to cancel the movement, and then going up here to Location in this Transform tab by opening that up and then just selecting that and putting negative sign in the front of it and then flipping it over there. We could do that, but if you want to do some more effects, then I, I recommend waiting so that we can do the effects we need to do first and then getting that done afterwards. So um, I also want to go ahead and really quickly now, um, I want to duplicate these out here. So we'll go uh, 0.2, we'll do that, and then back to the beginning. We'll do this all the way out here. So I want to go ahead and put this on something extreme like uh, 10. And then now when we scrub through that, you can see. All right. So what we're going to do is I want to go ahead and take each one of these and I kind of want to thin them out as they go along. So I want this first one to be uh, 1, 0.1. Then this next one, I want this one to be 0 0.09. Then you get the point, 0 0.08, 0 0.07, no, 0 0.07. And then for this last one, I want to go ahead and go 0 0.005. So it's not just a solid one. We'll turn that off so we can see that real quick. So now we have this kind of fading tapering effect here. which looks pretty sweet, so I'm gonna go ahead and now, uh, we can do this for all of them, you don't have to do the fade tapering effect, obviously, you do what you want, um, <laughs> we, we can, um, that looks really, that looks pretty cool, it's like a gradient, so we're gonna duplicate these over now, so, because I have all the things that I want, we're gonna go ahead and do the, the, the technique that I showed a little bit ago, so we're gonna select one of these, shift D, we're gonna right click to cancel that movement, we'll open up this tab over here, and then we'll go to the X value, and then put a negative sign at the front of each one of these. So now we'll go to the second one, uh, Shift D, right click to cancel the movement in front of the X value, negative, and I'll do this for all of them. All right, so I have finished uh, duplicating them all over, and what I'm gonna do now is, um, let me take a look at this really quickly before we continue. All right, so I think what we're gonna do is now is I'm gonna go ahead and, and make sure we can see all of the keyframes here, which looks like a pretty good place. We'll hit B to box select, we'll drag a box over top of all of them, we'll go to the material tab, and we will make sure that our material is not set to principal BSDF, it's set to emission. Um, but yeah, that's going to be it for today. Like I said, I hope you, uh, hope you enjoyed it. Let me know what you want to see next time. Music visualizer from scratch is pretty much pretty a lot of fun to do. I'll see you guys in the next one, but until then, bye-bye.